Kirchhoff's law helps us in understanding the voltage and current in a circuit. They also help in solving the complex circuits. And there are two Kirchhoff's laws. One is the Kirchhoff's current law or it is also called as KCL. And the second one is Kirchhoff's voltage law which is also called as the KVL. In this video, we will be learning about Kirchhoff's current law that is KCL. So to understand that, let's go to the simulation. So here, as you can see, uh, we have a circuit. Uh, uh, there are two resistors connected in parallel, 7 ohm and 3 ohm. And to that, we have a 10 volt DC source. And in each branch, we have connected ammeter to measure the current flowing through each branch. So you can see there are total four ammeters. Now let me start this simulation. And as you can see, the total current flowing through the circuit is 4.76 ampere. As we know, across in parallel circuit, the voltage across each, each load is same, that is 10 volt. But the current flowing through each branch will be different. So 4.76 ampere is the total current flowing. Then from this particular point, you can see uh, there is a current coming as 4.76 ampere, but that current is further getting divided into two currents that is 3.3 ampere and then 1.43 amperes right now let's evaluate this circuit furthermore to understand the kcl so as you can see this particular point here to this point we have connected multiple elements in the circuit so to this point we also have connected a 7 ohm register also this 3 ohm resistance and also the supply right so the point wherever multiple circuit elements are connected two or more that means that point is called as a node or the junction point right clear why junction point because we are connecting multiple elements to that two or more elements and that is the reason why it is called as the node or the junction point so this is this point can be called as the node Considering this node as the reference, you will see there is some current is incoming towards that node and some currents are going outgoing from that node, right? So if you see one current that is 4.76 ampere is the incoming current towards this node. So let's uh, label these currents here. So incoming current, we have only one current that is 4.76 ampere. We will label it as I1, right? Now talking about the outgoing currents, there are total two outgoing currents. One is this 3.3 ampere and second one is 1.43 ampere. So let's similarly also label the outgoing currents. We will label 1.43 as I2 and 3.33 as I3. Right? Clear? One outgoing current, sorry, one incoming current and two outgoing currents. Now the very important part here. Considering this node, uh, whenever the current is incoming towards that node, we label that current as positive, right? Incoming current towards the node is labeled as the positive current. So similarly, the outgoing current will be labeled as the negative current. Clear? So definitely I1 will be labeled as positive and I2 and I3, since they are outgoing current, they will label as the negative current. Clear? Now, if we add this incoming and outgoing current here, so I1 plus I2 plus I3. Now, I2 and I3 will be negative because they are outgoing. Let's add, let's put the value in this formula. If you do the calculation, you will get the sum of incoming current plus outgoing current as zero. You see here negative 1.43 plus negative 3.33 will give us negative 4.76 and the positive and negative will cancel out each other. What remains is zero. Clear? Now, if you go one more step ahead and you take out uh, all this negative value to the right hand side, you will get 4.76 is equals to 1.43 plus 3.33. That is nothing but the 4.76. And that proves that sum of incoming current is equal to sum of outgoing current. Clear? It is really easy. And th this also makes sense. The sum of incoming current is equals to sum of the outgoing current. Sim uh, just simply look at uh, the circuit here. You see the total incoming current uh, towards this node is 4.76 ampere. And from that node, there are two currents uh, that is getting splitted. 
one is 3.33 ampere and second one is 1.43 and if you add it you will get the same value that is 4.76 and that means the sum of incoming current uh, to this particular node is equal to sum of outgoing current clear now if you understood this congrats because you have understood the kirchhoff's current law this is nothing but the kirchhoff's current law or kcl now let's look at the official statement of kirchhoff's current law now the kirchhoff's current law state that the algebraic sum of the currents meeting at node or junction point in an electrical circuit is zero right now in this statement the word algebraic is really really important now we are using the word algebraic because we are considering the signs of current the positive current or negative current we are considering considering that to arrive at the result if let's say we we do not need to consider the sign then we could have write it as sum of the currents meeting but since we are using the sign we must write the word algebraic that is really important and if you are writing this statement in the exam please make sure you do not forget to write the word algebraic because if you forget to write algebraic then the meaning will be different right so why are we using algebraic here because we are considering the signs also the current signs are considered that is why the word algebraic so it states the algebraic sum of the current meeting at the node or junction point now we saw what is node or junction point the point at which two or more circuit elements are connected in the circuit that is called as the node so this point can be called as node this point also called as node so algebraic sum of the current meeting at node or junction point in electrical circuit is zero now this we have also seen in the simulation incoming current if you add incoming current plus outgoing current the sum will be zero and also we can write it as sum of incoming current is equal to sum of outgoing current this also we saw and that is very much clear to us so this is nothing but the kirchhoff's current law it is very very easy to understand and by the way it is called as kirchhoff's law because it was discovered by a german physicist named as gustav kirchhoff so that is why they are called as the kirchhoff's current law i hope you have now understood what is kirchhoff's current law in the next video we will be understanding the kirchhoff's voltage law